To new users, the 3D cursor doesn't seem that interesting. They use the snap tool here, but what's that good for, they say? It always seems to have you in its sights and taking aim, no matter where you are. And to be honest, they just don't trust it. On the View tab, the 3D cursor coordinates are displayed. Click and drag to move and rotate, but so what? When the tool is off, pressing Shift and the right mouse button will manually place the 3D cursor randomly. That's when some have enough and open the overlays menu and just switch it off. There, it's gone. Now what? Wait, there are a few more things I wanted to show before you write it off completely. On the tool shelf is the 3D cursor tool. When active, you can click and place the 3D cursor within the 3D view or on the face of objects. In the sidebar, with the shortcut N, in the view tab, those coordinates of the 3D cursor are visible. Here, you can move and rotate the 3D cursor accurately using the coordinates. Blender uses the right angle Cartesian system and that's where the Z axis is pointing upwards. The X axis runs left to right and the Y axis front to back. With these three axes, it's a way to describe every point in three dimensional space. So what's that got to do with the 3D cursor, you ask? Well, once you know these points, the 3D cursor and also the position of every vertex, edge and face can be calculated. We can see that again in the view tab where those coordinates of the 3D cursor are visible. From here, an accurate location of the 3D cursor can be set. To help see that visually, the red line represents the X axis, the green line, the Y axis, and if we open the overlays menu, switch on the Z axis and the blue line. All three lines overlap at the center of the world, 0, 0, 0. We can update the location fields to be 0, 0, 0 and place the 3D cursor back at world origin. The rotation fields below control the rotation of the 3D cursor. So click and drag or input a value to rotate. This is useful when aligning objects. So position the 3D cursor in the scene. Then from the add menu, we can add another cube. In the options box, change the align setting to be the 3D cursor. The default is world and this setting can be changed in user preferences. The 3D cursor has a dedicated snap menu. If you right click, then from snap, there are six settings here for the cursor. Here we can use cursor to world origin. That places it back at zero and also clears out the rotation values. That snap menu is also available here in the object menu. The shortcut is shift plus S to open the pie menu. Let's select a cube and from the mode menu, enter edit mode. Switch to Vertex Selection. Position the 3D cursor somewhere in the scene. Now select the vertex on the cube. Press Shift plus S and from here we can choose Selection to 3D Cursor. That will snap the selection to the 3D cursor. Press A and select it all. Press Shift plus S again and this time choose Selection to Cursor Keep Offset. This will snap your selection to the 3D cursor but maintain the vertices position relative to one another. You can also align objects to the location of the 3D cursor. First, we can switch back to object mode. Position the cursor in the scene. Then come to object and transform and down to align objects. In the option, set relative to 3D cursor. Then set the axis. All three can be activated using the shift key. From the align dropdown, Change to one of the options here. Press Shift plus S and choose Cursor to World Origin. We can call up the same snap menu, but this time we can choose Selection to Cursor. That snaps the origin of the cube to the 3D cursor. The yellow dot at the center of the cube is its origin. It's possible to change that origin point with the help of the 3D cursor. From the mode menu, we can switch to edit mode. Currently the origin is center and one thing to note, if we move all the mesh in edit mode, notice how the origin point remains in place. I can right click to cancel move. That's one major difference when moving objects in edit or object mode. In object mode, the origin moves along. We can set the origin at the base of the cube and it's usually where you want it. Up top, change the mesh selection type to face. Then select the bottom face. 
Press Shift plus S and put the cursor to selected. To set the origin, we need to switch back to Object Mode. Then from the Object menu in Set Origin, we can choose Origin to 3D Cursor. The dot or origin of the cube updates to that face. The pivot point in Blender can be set to the 3D cursor and this allows rotation around its position. In the Location field, we can input 0 for the X, Y and Z and place the cursor back to 0. Let's use the gizmo here and come into Front View. If we press R and rotate the cube, it rotates around its own origin point. We can change that here in the pivot menu. The default is median and will rotate around the origin of an object or when in edit mode, around the median point of the selection. Change this to 3D cursor. Now back here, press R to rotate. This time it's rotating around the 3D cursor. We can right click to cancel rotation. Then reposition the cursor. Now press R and rotate again. This can be a great way to rotate objects quickly. Let's change the pivot point back to median from the menu. If we come to the Add menu, In Mesh, Add a Sphere. Objects get added by default to the position of the 3D cursor. This works the same way in Edit Mode. So now you can switch this off from the Overlays menu and never hear from it again or embrace this versatile and multi-purpose tool and discover just how essential it really is when working in Blender.